And hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Cameron Marceau and Sridhar Yadavali. Hi, everybody. Again. Um, having fun doing another My Friends Are Awesome dot com, and we are joined by Melanie Brown. Are you? I. 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 You know. I did. I assumed. I just said Melanie Brown. Are. Are you? I'm Melanie. Yeah. You are Melanie Brown. Okay. I never changed my name. Okay. Our names did not hyphenate nicely. Brown okay. Patty, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was mentioning that earlier, and to Cameron that that you know because yeah. we were wondering what to call you, and I and, <laughs> and he thought, well, did they hyphenate? Is it Brown Patty? And I told him, well, I've been called a Brown Patty in my time, and it's not a very good thing to say. <laughs> so I'm just just yeah. putting it out there for. And hopefully the recording this time is much better than it has been lately because uh, my my computer I'm using is is not as slick as the one I have been using and apparently when you use better technology it wor doesn't work as well on the Google Hangouts because like I got some really poor quality on the last ones um, but this one seems to be great I went back to the old computer and the old setup and this is wonderful. And, and Melanie, you're on your phone? I am. That's awesome. This picture <laughs> is phenomenal. It's like, it's so cool. This is like, I feel like it's almost better than mine. So. <laughs> I need so, a stand. <laughs> it's the, the perpetual selfie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll selfie. So, um, so. How have you been? I've been okay. You've I've been, been on, now. I've we've been, we've run into you off and on. Like I've seen you here and there. Yeah. And it sounds like Shree's seen you here and there. So like, like we're we're in the same, in the same. I mean, we run into each other fairly fairly often, right? Yeah. And and what have you been doing? Um. Well, the. Uh... The second child has come along, and he's 18 months now. So quite nicely, he, I might add. What? He's, looking, he's looking quite handsome, if I may say so. He is. He is a little handsome guy, and he's much more mobile than Phineas was. Let's say, very. Oh. You just chase him around, chase him around, and he comes to my studio with me. But it's not quite as easy as sure. with Phineas. <laughs> So, well, so I've been, yeah. Well, I, I've I've always said uh, when I first met, I, we met. I remember meeting Phineas specifically on a tricycle. I wasn't on a tricycle; he was. <laughs> uh, uh, we had. Uh, it turns out our dear friends, uh, Kristen Warlick and and uh, Sarah Reynolds, were in town in Chicago, and you and Mike Patty and Hi, little Phineas goes around the corner. From a little, from a little hole in the wall place that I don't remember anymore. That but, was, that was, was that when we, when we met at Fresher? Yeah. The billiard place. Well, is it a billiard place? It wasn't a very big billiard place, I have to admit. That's the first and, time I met. And, uh, I remember Dew Ross was there. That's the first time I'd seen him in a long time. I was still smoking back then, so I, you know, I would step out. Uh, but I remember meeting Phineas, and I went, now that. I, I can relate to that kid because our kids were about the same. My wife was with me at the time, but we left the kids at home. And I went, man, I should have brought the boys because these three would have been thick as thieves the whole time, you know. And then uh, I, and then now and then I met Stephen the second time we bumped into each other, and yeah. that was over at the Architectural Foundation. And I was right; the older boys just hung out together and. Went right, right. Through. It was really cool. It was kind of neat. It was kind of neat to watch the dynamic. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's your dad. That's your mom. All right, cool. Come on, let's. Would you look at this? That's the Sears Tower. Would you look at that? It was fat. It was. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There's a definite. definite. There's this Zen connection going. Yes. I need to get. I need to get Phineas over to my house because I got to tell you, I got the instruments down here. And I know, I know, I know. Uncle Gabe has got some serious drum stuff at his place, but I got the shiznit over here. I mean, they, and they get, they get to have, they get to hit it all. 
I guess. <laughs> Well, we're thinking of going to the to Fermilab again on the fifteenth. There's a there's something that you register for, but it's for kids seven to twelve. Really? Mm-hmm. On the fifteenth. So I think it'd be really fun to go um, without Sabin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looked like uh, Mike looked like he was walking around and following the boy all over the place. Yep. Yep. And yep. Saban looked like he wanted to get in and start like firing off rockets or, or yeah, you know, smashing atoms, smashing atoms and beating halons and starting colliding. opening <laughs> black holes. Generally, he has no taking off, just leaving. Just... <laughs> we'll be at the playground. I'm out. You... I'll know. I'll see how far he goes. Go to like go like half a block. Wow. <laughs> Not look back. So. Wow. He's an interesting little independent fellow. <laughs> <laughs> so been, so he's been, got things to do. The boy's got things to do. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. Hang out. So, so Melanie, you have a studio. I do. Shree, have we talked to anybody with a studio yet? No. This is no. our first person who has a studio that we've talked to. And that's awesome. And, and you're in Ravenswood, right? Very important thing to have. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's in Ravenswood. It's at uh, Lil Street Art Center. Um, on the second floor, they have um, quite a few artist studios, and there are, are only a, uh, how many people? There are like three or four people who do um, 2D work. Everybody else is either um, doing ceramics or metalworking. Right. Really? Mm -hmm. So, so they've it's got, got a full-blown pardon the pun, a full-blown kiln and more than a few, and the whole, it's all set up for sort of the, the industrial side of things? It's all set up for, um, there are kilns everywhere. There, yeah. <laughs> a huge gas kiln downstairs and a, um, a soda fire, soda kiln, there's, um, there, and then there are a bunch of electric kilns, and, and then there's one, there's another one upstairs too, there's another, I, I think that's a gas kiln too. Well, but, um, yeah, so there, there's a lot of work going on there. Because I recall that was um, up and down Ravenswood. I mean, up and down where that was, that was light industrial. It was zone light industrial <laughs> back in the, back in, as late as the 1980s, as I remember. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so it, it wouldn't surprise me to see something like that. A gallery. Yeah. With, you know, in there, that are a lot of, um, there are a lot of buildings that have, that have artists have taken over. In that in that neighborhood and um, and things like yoga studios and sure and, uh, yeah wow. it's that's a lot. awesome do you do you teach as well as as well as do your own artwork is that is that how you fabulous and how many students have you have walked through your doors over the years since you started oh, that's an interesting I never thought of that as like a number of how many students, but oh gosh, I don't know. Well, we since you started residence there. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm Well, I've been at Lowell Street now for like 14 years. Wow. So it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I for the past 12 years, I was um, the the uh, director of the children's program, mm -hmm. and so we'd have. Uh, how many kids did we have each each week for camp alone? Like each week, you'd have like 150 kids. Wow! Oh wow! Yeah, so it was, it's a big operation, and um, so I I run into people all the time who uh, I've had their kids. You know. My son Amit has said openly that he wants to become an artist. He okay. said, "Screw screw everything! I want to become an artist, and I want to be able to." Make enough money to sustain myself, and donate some money, and just do my art and screw everything. His quote, not mine. <laughs> and, and I went, okay. <laughs> Fine. And my wife and I just go, well, okay, you're you're on your way. But his whole thing is he wanted to do origami specifically, and that's all he wanted to do. Oh, went, well, you know. Yeah. Have hmm? you seen 
The Fold? The no. Documentary? I have or not the, seen it. It is amazing. It's it's a documentary on origami, and it's the, one of the best things I've ever seen. Really? It, it's really, really good. Well, yeah, I would love it. I no, bet are they, I get it on the Netflix. Are they, are they talking to origami millionaires? No. Do they, so these 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 origami guys don't can't tell everybody you to to screw it. <laughs> You're fully wrong. Fuck you. Yeah, they they they're they they're not they're not making the rules. Hmm. No. Well, there are it, there are they kind of go from from what I remember. It's been a while since we I saw it, but it went from. Um, had three parts, and uh, and so there was um, kind of the, the the more traditional origami, and then there were the kind of mathematician origami, and and it was the it was kind of like uh, um, how many folds could you could you make like the sure. most kind, and then there were the fine artists like you know where they would like make one fold or you know like like making. <laughs> The Philip Glass of origami. <laughs> <laughs> the minimalist origamiist. <laughs> it was a really amazing. Uh, um, it was a really amazing documentary. I think you had Shri at 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 um, mathematician mathematical origami. Oh yeah, no, I, I just... he had he had to, he had to like like wipe his mouth a little. He was so exactly like... right. And all of a sudden, my eyes glazed over past the camera, and I'm thinking, ooh. All right, well, you know. You should, I'm, you should I'm looking at, I'm looking at, I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, polygons all of a sudden in a new way, you know. I go, oh hell, I gotta wait just a minute. <laughs> Let me take my Home Depot receipt. And... <laughs> I gotta think about that. How many, how many, how many perfect Platonian folds can I make to make a? Oh. My son would know. I, I have no idea. So, so, so. I mean, so, so you are a you are an an artist. You that is what you do, right? I guess so. Yeah, yeah. It's what I do. I um. That's so teaching and I think and that's making. cool. Well, you're our first. I believe you're our first professional uh, media artist. I guess. What, what 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 would we call how would we how would we rate um Stoller? Oh oh no okay Stoller would be there too but but I think Stoller's Stoller's medium is is the is the cloth work. No so, it was it was um oh, no, no, no it was also, it was putting she did also art too I guess but she did she did photography on wood. Yeah. She was transferring she was photos on wood. On wood. So I guess she would be in the subset of photography. You know what I'm saying? Mixed with uh, sort of a mixed medium sort of thing. Yeah. This is straight up, straight up, you know, Picasso, Dali, their sort of artistry. This is. Yeah, it's just as you know, fine art as. Uh... <laughs> oh, I agree. No, no, no. I mean, no, it's just that. It's just that. Uh, except for other, I mean, Jen Hager out in the West Coast. Is the first person that comes to mind, and and uh, the, Mike Akara was the teak before us uh, in the '80s. He's he's strictly a painter, but I don't know that many that as well as I know you, and that's and 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 it's an honor, if I may say so. Uh, it's great to interview because it's rare that it's rare that I am so out of my wheelhouse when it ah. comes to discussing things. I am very much, uh, and and Cameron will will debate hours on how pathetically obvious I am about things. But I am, I am. Uh, Me debate? No way. <laughs> I I am I am so obviously um, scientific in my thinking that sometimes it it hides my itch for the artistry or my or my. Uh, my love for the crafts and my love for for art, and it mostly stems from the musical side of me, not the not the scientific. But I think they all come together. I think it's all steamy, if you will, as opposed mm -hmm. to stemmy. Um, 
And to talk to an artist is awesome, if I may. I mean, in, in a more formal setting. Not that we don't talk at all. I think we've at, at homecoming last formal, you know. <laughs> this is a little, this is, well, it's a little bit. It's it's more of an informal formality. <laughs> tell me about tell me about the business of art from your perspective. Oh yeah. Talk about it. <laughs> well. It's an open um, question. Yeah, well, it's, I think a lot of people, you know, you, you most people teach, right? I mean, you, mm -hmm. um, to make to make a living, or some people are really good at uh, at um, getting grants and that sort of thing. But, um, but but most people teach in order to support the the work because you know you don't sell a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't count on that. It's not um, not something that's uh, definitely. You know, two people are going to sell something. <laughs> so, right. um, uh, and, um, and a lot of people, you know, go to to being a professor, which you know I had originally thought that would be what I would do, and I just kept not um, pursuing it, and I realized that I just didn't want to be in that environment. And, yeah. You know, didn't want to go that way, and uh, but I do I do really like to teach, and I kind of see teaching as part of my an extension of my my practice because I think I teach a lot in the same way that I make art that it's very um, uh, kind of experimental and and, um, and I take a lot of risks where I I have an idea of what we're what I'm te teaching. I mean, of course, I have an idea of what I'm teaching, but um, I'm always paying attention to the um, to each individual person and and uh, and trying to just get them to a place where, where they will kind of find their own way through guidance, but not not find my way. Sure. But come up with their own solutions for for things. So so really. Um, uh, so to draw the parallel between. That and, and my work when I'm making a painting, I'm really um, reacting to what the material is doing on the um, on the painting and and trying to take it really see what what it's what's happening there sure. and that inform the painting. And so I feel like that's, that's how I teach is that I'm really looking to really understand it and helping them express. Things their way. I see. Um, is now there's got to be a there's got to be a fine line between the experimental way of doing it, in other words, the, what you feel good about in terms of how you how you do your work, and just basic techniques because that there's got to be some universality to to all right. This is how you shadow. This is how you this is how you uh, mix different colors to get hues and to get to get patterns going. Yeah. The, 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 uh, some people are just going, and I just need to learn the obvious shit because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You know. Um, to make their own um, decisions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Out like for the beginning classes. Um, you're teaching them uh, how to look at something and how to uh, use these different techniques to describe what you are seeing. And, um, but they all have their own individual style, and so trying to preserve that so that they're not just all Bob Rossing you, or you're not Bob Rossing them and telling them, like, everybody make a mark here, and every, this is the right way to do it. This sure. Is, by the way, I, I'm your your voice is cutting in and out. I don't know if that's happening with Cameron as well. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of that. And I, I don't know why with, with the. Um, I, is it possible you're sometimes covering the microphone or? Oh no, my so I don't know if maybe it's running out of power. I have not plugged in though. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Can you hear me now or? It, yeah, at the moment. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> I need to get some more wine. Cameron, you get the next question. <laughs> okay, so um, so you've been so you've been at Little Street like since shortly after graduation, right? Mm, no. Um, well, you said how long have you been there? I've been there like 12, 13 years. So. Okay. So there's what, like seven years in between? That sounds right. Have you? So have you been doing the art thing straight through? Post um, and then. Um. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, I can um in different ways. So. Um. Uh. In between college and, and grad school, I taught art. This was an interesting experience. I taught art in a middle school that was a boarding school that was military. <laughs> I lived with the high school kids and taught in the middle school. And it was it was quite quite an experience. Let me tell you. <laughs> It was it was odd. It was Michael was still in that job. I think I called him every day. It was, it was brutal <laughs> to to be in that environment after Doc was was very interesting. Uh, yeah, I bet. Mm hmm That's wow. School. So so have you had any so like I've I've stayed playing with, with philosophy stuff ever since it's it's something I can't not do, um, right. and over the years I've had um, more epiphanies, more aha moments, more things where 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 that has changed, where I've had significant changes in my outlook. Have you had similar things in your artistic journey? Um, oh, where you absolutely. where you're just like, oh my gosh, how about this? I think that um, there's because you're you know you you love your your uh, your teachers and you but it's always a struggle of trying to figure out who you are yeah. and um, and uh, the whole process of going through through grad school is um, everybody's arguing and it's all about the crits and and um, the critiques and uh, and I was introduced to um, to people who had come from di much different um, artistic backgrounds, or just their um, uh, you know their heroes were not my heroes, and, uh, and um, so that was really eye opening and and uh, yeah, I mean just um, just changing my radical, you know. I definitely started to feel. Kind of my my own um, like more free once we moved here and I'd been out of school for a long time. I think my my phone is dying, even though I have it plugged in. Huh. Uh, let, me, let me see something just a second. Sure. So as usual, there's interesting complications with every video that we do. It's it's part of the thing. It's like it's like drunk history where there, there's the vomiting, you know. Yes. You have to have you have to have the complications. Okay. <laughs> although all the although joke. although the guest going offline because her phone is dying, I wouldn't equate that to vomiting. But <laughs> I, I just I just wouldn't. But that's me. <laughs> no, it, it's, no, it's the it's like Barbara Walters. There's always crying. Right, right. Drunk history. There's always the vomiting. Sure. My friends are awesome. Dot com. There's always the the random yeah, adjustments. This is. This is, looks like a the adjustments. Maybe this will help. I have it. Okay. Okay. We'll try this. Okay, and, and okay. what exactly did you do different? Um, it was plugged in, it was charging through the computer, and I got the actual, I have it into a wall now, so we'll see. Oh, I see, so it's getting direct power and not trying to dump data or something. Direct yeah, use. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 
but now I can't I can't get my wine. So just one moment. <laughs> Damn it, woman. No, that that is the important that is an important part. And and again, first world issues, I agree. It's this <laughs> So do you have any, do you have any patrons now? Like do you have do you have uh, fans? You or yeah, yeah. Um people who, yeah. who seek out your work or, or 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 go to galleries and stuff for or you know your art shows? Perhaps the Ricketts, I don't know. And I, I've met people, um, just like I mentioned, because um, we they had us come out to um, to do like a lunchtime talk on our work. I had a show camera in it at Fermi Lab. Yes. Yes. And How did that go? Uh, it was great. It was great. It was um, uh, what a nice like, bunch of people out there. Oh yeah, together. those science geeks are really kind of fun. Yeah, and everybody went after after the talk. Then we all went to lunch at the on, on the campus there, and uh, it just like a, like a like a, it was the seventies and the eighties, and it was like a, a late camp house or something like a. Hmm. I mean, it, it just had that feeling. But um, but but anyway, there were there were a few. Local artists who came to the talk and and, sure. um, and I was talking about I have the influence that my children have. Uh, oh yeah, and, and you've had them. You've had Phineas at least, and I think Saban as well participate in the artwork. Be be mm -hmm. be be, par, be associate artists or, or or indentured servants. I don't know, whatever on the piece. <laughs> Why, why, that's exactly that's exactly as advertised. The child comes in. You know what? I think I want to. Okay, here, use the brush. Go this way. <laughs> you know. Well, what I what I've done is I have created somebody um, who uh, uh, gives me critiques and you know tells me. <laughs> you you've created an art critic. I seriously. I like that painting. It's that, that's a that's a good one. Or he'll just be like, I don't think that's finished yet. Or you know, I don't like. That. That's right. Yeah. Get back to work. I'm, I'm, reading, I'm reading Magic Free House. Get back to work. So Shri, you went to you went to the to the Fermi Lab show, right? I no, we went to. There was an open every year. I didn't go to the Fermi Lab uh, art opening, but I did go to Fermi Lab for. Their yearly open house. And I thought that you went and you took pictures and stuff. I could have sworn that just the other day you were you were there doing that. I was taking pictures mostly of the science projects and and the children, and only because Mike and Melanie came later than I did, I think, or we just missed each other and we saw each other for a brief moments. Um. And we, we were at the we were at the we were at the the Mr. Freeze thing at different times and and like that. But um, it was it was a Fermi Lab open house where it invites the public to come in, and it highlights junior scientists doing their science projects in front of or themes uh, for the public, and you get to meet the scientists and talk about Higgs boson and and things colliding and. Particle accelerators and real-time observations at CERN and all that sort of thing. That's what it was really for. Okay. Uh, but I did have a long conversation with Saban, who, well, a short one because I tried talking to him and he just disappeared. <laughs> He's going, hey, how you doing? Boom, I got to go. I'm sorry. I got to And just took off. And then Mike looks at me and goes, I'm sorry, I got to, and <laughs> runs after the boy. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, that was kind of fun. Uh, yeah, uh, Amit really had a great time, and he, he had a great time talking to Phineas. That's for sure. That's great. Um, let me ask you this though. Um, Eeyore, I I had the question and I lost it. I should have written it down. Um, no, get. I, <laughs> Okay, Cameron, you have another question. So, I, I so, had one in my tongue. So, so Melanie, you're, you, uh, 
it sounds like Phineas does a whole lot in 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 quantum physics and such. <laughs> and, and 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 you seem to like follow right along. Do you do you have a penchant or a, or an attraction towards um, physics and the especially strange science? Is that I uh, I've always been curious. I never took physics, or I I was uh, I took a lot of upper level biology when I was in high school, and then I thought I was maybe going to be a biologist at Knox, but I took an art class when I was a senior in high school, and then it was a summer thing, and then it was... Okay. Okay, so so we're in uh, Melanie Brown's studio, and um, I, I took a bunch of pictures, and you're watching them rotate now. But now I'm, I'm going to talk to Melanie because we have this awesome opportunity, because she is in Chicago, where Shri and I are based as well. And so we thought we'd stop by the studio and see uh, where it all happens and talk about what she does and, and ask really annoying questions that people ask of artists. <laughs> like, about your process. That's not <laughs> really? That doesn't annoy you? Like, doesn't everybody ask you about your process? Yeah, but it's okay, because then you think about it, and you have to think about your process but and how to explain it. Do you have to think about it anymore? Um, it's always changing. I oh, guess, so, okay. You know. So it's not, it's not like, it's not a point. It's right. a, it's a, it's a wave. <laughs> it's a wave. It's a wave. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I approach different, different things differently. It's okay. Oh, okay. Because like, like this is so directional. Oh, okay. Like, like, it's not, okay. If I hold it like this, I can't hear you. Got it. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um. Okay. So, so overwhelmingly, um, I'm working for my imagination, and um, uh, so, um, but it's based in. I always have something that I'm that I'm looking at. So, in the case with this painting or these two paintings, um, I had those. Uh, I had some taxidermy prairie chickens in the studio for. For a while, and so I did a bunch of you, drawings. You, you had you had them for a while. They were they were they were hanging out for a good six weeks. Where does one get taxidermy prairie chickens? You get them at the Field Museum. You can check them out, like the library. Not for nothing. That's a great name for a band. Taxidermy <laughs> field chickens. Just think about that for a moment. But uh, what about the idea of renting? Taxidermy. taxidermy. Well, I didn't know that this was a service that was offered. Yeah, and there's one where it has uh, wildlife of Chicago, and one of the things that comes in it is this rat in a tube. Oh. <laughs> That's an album name. <laughs> <laughs> rat in a tube is a an album name. It's pretty amazing. A rat I, in. Yeah, I had to like carry it around the building. So it was. A, it's a sh Chicago fauna package. Exactly. It's like a uh -huh. Chicago fauna pack uh -huh. of Isn't taxidermy. Is there a Chicago taxidermy? I mean, institute or something like that? I thought I saw... I don't know. It's all pigeons, seagulls, and rats. Well, My that's friends field over museum. at Woolly Mammoth. Cool. Have you been to Woolly Mammoth? And, uh, no. Um, they have all kinds of oddities. But I know that they've had taxidermy courses there. <laughs> it's in... It's in uh, this, is, this, is a, this is an interesting angle that you don't actually... <laughs> you don't actually see, is that artists develop relationships with people like taxidermists. Well, you don't think about that, right? But that's part of the process that you kept asking her about, right? Well, effectively her process is to use No, that's 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 the extended network. That's the ah. it's like you know, I need an animal, but a live one just is not going to cut it. So, we need a It sounds like some sort of critter. underground economy that you're discussing. I know, it's like <laughs> Like the un the seedy underbelly people, of, of studio big. art. <laughs> like tomorrow, huh? Oh, have oh, you yeah. seen Chuck Testa, the the um, the taxidermy um, uh, commercials? Because if mm. you haven't, they're pretty amazing. Is this really? late night TV it's or like, something? It's like a um, it's a it was one of those like sensations that got sent around. But uh, <laughs> but it's the guys. <laughs> Commercials for his taxidermy business. He's it's, gonna have a reality show soon. It's, it's awesome. like L.A. taxidermy. <laughs> right after, right after Duck Dynasty. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Pretty, it's pretty awesome. So, I mean, if if you 
do you characterize your style? Does it, because like there's realist and impressionist right. and there's, I mean, there's do you? There's definitely like an abstract expressionist like technique, I would say, okay. as far as um, wanting the wanting the the marks of the paint to have a life of their of their own just without an without the image even mm -hmm. and um uh but i do like having an image like something you can a space that you can recognize that you can walk through and and uh, not like a pollock right yeah right okay. so it's so so an overwhelmingly like landscape kind of space and um and uh yeah, you're. Yeah, and and you, I mean, you. You'd think that the the critters would be the focus, and everybody wants to put the focus in the middle. Mm. But like, yeah, you you use the full space. You're like showing the whole thing, and the and the 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 chickens are. Just, they're hidden in there. They're a part of it. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's it's like the whole thing is. So so what are you the using? The portrait of the chicken. The portrait of the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> As a young man. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and they didn't have chicks with them. I just, you know. You extrapolated. I the guess chicks? too. You know, like I've got two kids now, so I've got these little families. I wasn't really thinking of it that way, but. Did yeah. you ever get your hands on the owl? No, I just got a bunch of photos for the, the people to look at. Photos. It was fine. So, yeah. But you can use color if you want. Ooh, let me check out the. You guys keep talking. I'm going to use color for my planets. Just talk to Daddy. So when you're when you're um, when you're when you're making a piece, does it just appear, um, or do you have do you know exactly what it's going to look like? There is, I usually kind of um, have some sort of, some sort of plan as far as, um, like for this, I'll just, I'll just talk about these, um, since we're standing right in front of them. Yeah, um, the so, prairie chicken ones. So I knew they were going to be, they were going to have the, ch the chickens in there and um, took a lot of liberties with the color, but, um, but I wanted to put them in some sort of lush kind of space, um, lots of grasses and, and whatnot, and um, oh, and I there. started these, um, well, with acrylic, you don't have to prime the canvas first. So you're using acrylic. So I'm using acrylic, and I'm also using, like, this is uh, um, just powder pigment, um, so, so, uh, so some sometimes I just drop, like work on it flat, and and sprinkle pigment down and find images in that too. Or, wow. Um, but so so you don't have to prime it first. So you have the color of the raw canvas, which is not quite white. Uh -huh. um, and you can also then prime it with the acrylic paint itself. So so for this one, um, I started with it on the floor. And um, and just thinned out like green paint for for the bottom, and some of it I left raw, and some of it I um, some of it I primed with white, some of it I so so I just had something at the beginning to work. On. So I wasn't working off of a canvas that was all the same color when I started. I okay. kind of had um, okay. Had I see what you're saying. Of, you know, and um, and let some of the material start to dictate. The imagery that came out. Oh. So, so really moving it around and kind of thinking through the material is kind of. I guess that's probably like mostly of my like the core of my process would be definitely I think through the material. Okay. And um, I'm not someone who draws it out. When you don't sketch it and plan it. And exactly. Okay. Yeah. But I had a lot of uh, paintings of the prairie chickens and drawings that I did from life. Okay. So I studied them and then messed with it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. Now, now, I can see a definite style through all of your your pieces. Has it always been the same? I'm trying to think back when when yeah. you were when you were doing art when you. I definitely always worked through the paint. Like I always I always kind of. Uh, Did it always have the same? look and feel the same style um, or do you feel like you've changed I've definitely changed yeah and um, um, I think I got uh, more of a range of texture with with the paint and and um, uh, 
um, more subtlety than I used to have <laughs> as far as um, and letting some some areas be more washy and leaving them that way and, um, but but I think the core of it like the all the kind of gestural marks and the uh -huh. just really working with the material and and using that as it's like physical thinking okay you know, okay um, I, I, I get that is pretty yeah, I've just I've just broadened my tools in all the different ways that can touch the uh, <laughs> touch the canvas and let the yeah. so so you're these are acrylic have you do you only use acrylic have you always used acrylic I have used acrylic for Phineas is seven years old so I've used acrylic for seven years because Phineas is my son and that's right <laughs> Because my children spent time in the studio with me. That's okay, part of, part now, of the deal. what is... <laughs> so you, you said you started with oils first? So I always used oils. And and then you made the switch to acrylic because of kids. Because of kids, because you don't have the fumes. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as long as they don't eat it, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have turpentine around or... Okay. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. See, I did use it when so I got the okay to use it while I was I have to pregnant. Clean up my garage now but <laughs> once he was out and was breathing on his own, which reminds me, I got to um, clean up my garage because yeah. I've got turpentine and mineral spirits, and ah, I yeah, got, I've got pretty much an explosive <laughs> situation. Yeah. That's that's isn't that just everybody's garage? I don't know. Like in one way or another. So, but I mean that that. I mean, I wouldn't have ever thought that, yeah. that, that, that whole situation. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a, a, a fact of life that's off my radar. Yeah. Right. And I mean, you're not a house painter or anything, Shree. Except, well, no, I mean, I'm not a professional house painter. I'm an amateur house and painter. And that's why you have all the, all the stuff, stuff around. like oh, sitting sure. around in your garage. Absolutely. And in my backyard and wherever I, yeah. you know. Where, until I can get time to collect, uh, correctly dispose of said material. Ah, just pour it down the drain. Yes. Ah, <laughs> this is Chicago. It's just going to go in the river. The suburbs, they're a little bit more anal retentive. You can mine the river. I got a, I got a, I got a. Oh. Uh, what? I've, I've heard of like, uh, they, they had something on like, wait, wait, don't tell me about mining, like the sewers for gold. Yep. Yeah, because, <laughs> well, I mean, there's so much heavy metal in the water, mm, you could mm. pull it out. Yeah, something like that. I, I, heard, I heard that. I think it was, I think it was, but that's a West Coast phenomenon. Not, mm. I don't know if it was Chicago. Huh. Uh, no, but uh, it, it's totally different. It's totally different in the suburbs, though, than it is in the city. Uh, you know your alderman. You could probably dump anything you want down the drain. Oh, yeah, that, that's what I was, I was going to say. Not, are you going to say it's more I, restrictive? I, I don't think oh, so. Oh, yes, it is, because I'll, I'll tell you this. Just two days ago, we got a citation in our in the mailbox because my wife left the Christmas wreath on the door. Oh, you live in one of those places. And there is a stipulation that you have up to T after sixty days or something to get rid of your your Christmas your your holiday <laughs> holiday accoutrements on your house. Wait, wait, and 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 she and forgot what, the, what kind of. What kind of rule is this? Is this a it, this is this is DuPage County suburban rule? It's it's a county rule. No, it's or a city a, rule. It's a city it's a, ordinance. It's a city ordinance. The city of where I live. Yeah. So everywhere, it's not just your community. Uh, well, I only know my community. God forbid I should get uh, citations from other communities. I was in Aurora last week, and I saw that guy. Somebody better find him. And all of a sudden, I get something from Downers Grove saying. <laughs> you you saw we saw a wreath driving through your town heaven for yeah. fend no, oh goodness I, i'm just not up on my uh, on my cat i would now. i would be so doomed yeah. no i took I, the, I, I totally i took the damn thing down what did i it took me 10 minutes boom I'm that's finished. one of the yeah i would <laughs> yeah christmas i that would that would make me like just be like no no ornaments ever, <laughs> ever that's again. That's we're right. we're getting we're getting slapped for it. Anyway, I, I've noticed, by the Thank way, through know. your through 
one of the things I've noticed as a theme is that um, landscape yeah. seems to either be uh, very prominent or all, it. it's, uh, it's always obvious that you're, you're, you're framing your ideas in, in either a greater or a very specific landscape. Well, mm -hmm. you know, this... for example, I, you get the get the whole idea of uh, of the landscape is, to me is a very prominent piece. I I notice mm -hmm. it first before I get to the detail work. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, is that again, is that something that was very common? But I I, I don't recall. I'm, again, oh, my work too many, from before. Yeah, too too much drinking in my end. It has. Oh me. no. So yeah, because um, since I knew you guys in college, I was doing lots of portraits back mm -hmm. then, and lots of self portraits, which I guess makes a lot of sense since sure. you, you want to. You want to do people. You don't want to always like. It was a good way to get boys in my studio, right? Like, come, and, come and sit down, and you can kind of look at. Yeah. You know <laughs> what? Funny. It. I. I love being painted. That's just my narcissism. You know. Like, yeah. Because. I just needed I don't the money. Know. It, I don't it, know about I you. Feel, <laughs> I, I, I needed the money. I don't. I. I don't matter here nor there. I actually don't like getting photographed or painted. I. I don't find myself to be any aesthetically. I, I don't I, you know, I don't feel it like I, that I feel very self-centered I feel like I feel like it's getting attention you know like as much as like having your hair done or ha getting massaged yeah being painted or photographed or something I feel like is on that level oh I maybe I, that's strange but I don't I, know I, I, I sympathize with that I just I, when I was in college I did it for the money and that was it yeah I was never I, I in fact was very curious but 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 I didn't want to necessarily see the output that students were doing when I was a life model. And but it was it was it was brought up uh, when I was talking to Tony and Lynette, like we were we were uh, talking about the bandage. Oh but, but, yeah. But, and they they thought, they thought I was talking about somebody else. Somebody else. It was the same. Somebody else got had the same injury. Like years later. Yes. <laughs> like <laughs> history repeated itself. <laughs> Wow, that's fascinating. <laughs> that's, that's not right. So I think that there's a curse or something. That before Lynette was there, that somebody else it is got it, it's a, you know, yeah, it's like right? it's a, it's a, it's a every, every decade, fifteen years or so. Yeah. Some some idiot who's in the life sciences modeling thing gets the gets the injury. In the maybe it's the maybe it's the 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 subject stool is cursed. <laughs> that's possible. So if you do it, then you get this curse that's that possible. makes you have to wear a bandage. But anyway, back to so you were you were saying landscape, Sri. I see landscape. I, that's a, well, especially in the more more recent work and the, even in the smaller pieces behind you. Yeah, after we went to, uh, we spent we spent more time in Colorado, like, sure. and so um, after that, there were just more and more. Yeah, and then uh, I also like to invent planets and have <laughs> landscapes that are because of. Finn's interest in space. We went to the. We started uh -huh. going to the planetarium five years ago on a very regular basis. Sure. Like we were going every until he went to school, and once now he doesn't have. You know, but we were, week, yeah, right? we were there like once a week, once every two weeks for sure. And so, and then always reading about space, always watching documentaries. So my whole world view is now it's like, oh, I don't have to stop at one sun. Sure. I can have multiple moons. I can have you know. That's yeah. awesome. And, You're gonna uh, be like on the cover so. of sci-fi magazine <laughs> right? mm. and uh we're, we're looking at planet of snails right now <laughs> <laughs> i love it i used to have an aquarium that i painted from and so uh so i you want me to decided to have some uh snail trails from uh, they used to eat cameron has temporarily the given me the microphone so he can through, through the algae and make these little circular circuitous trails through the sure. algae and sure. so i used to put those in my paintings so i used to have kind of like waterscapes and and um so so i've been kind of on this whole landscape idea for quite a while um either kind of dreamscapes uh -huh. or, sure. um, so uh, did you get a chance to see uh chris nolan's interstellar movie at all i have not seen that okay then I, I want to revisit your point of view once you, ah, if you okay. get an opportunity to see it. I've heard, I've heard not good things about well, it. Well, again, I, I, I rarely, <laughs> I rarely, no, no, I I rarely, I rarely uh -huh. listen to the noise. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'd, li I'd rather have my own opinion yeah, about yeah, how stupid yeah. something is. Yeah. 
and I was pleasantly entertained. Oh. All right. Uh huh. Um, I thought it was a little long. Okay. But, but uh, conceptually, uh huh, it was uh, in its own in its own universe and its own uh-huh. understanding. Uh huh. Spot on. I, I it, totally uh, bought it. Yeah, the science was, the, the, was pretty the sci- good. And it was entertaining, at least in that, in that sort uh-huh. of it's, It sounds like he does a lot of... Like, if I go to a movie and, and see that, like, like, I sit through the first 30 minutes, I'm like, oh, my God, this is terrible. Yeah. I don't leave. I just... I just Endure the terrible I, Well, then I start <laughs> saying, well, let's look at what's good. Right. You know, it's like, okay. No, uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't have a problem. The costumes that. are great. <laughs> no, <laughs> is, I, said, I said that with this Hobbit. is good makeup this yeah, is that, yeah that, that hobbit boy <laughs> the hairy like, feet are awesome uh, for anyone who's wondering and it's probably going to get cut out anyway melanie just Sorry. grab some more <laughs> no grab some more well, the children need paper as you can tell we, we this is this we've we've got lots of kids here as well and and we're all having fun yeah, half a dozen <laughs> half a dozen is not a lot that can seem like much. that can seem like 24 yeah that can seem like two dozen at times so this is pretty special having all of our kids hang around. I know it's and it's just very nice. Yeah, it's, uh-huh. I, I, I unfortunately my my wife and my mother in law have other things that were taken care of, but they would have been here. But, uh, it would have been an interesting time. Over here we have the Purple Mountains Majesty. Yeah. Yes, that's. Is that wait? Is there a recent. is there a city down there too? Yep. Or at least some sort of. There's there's something. I don't, I haven't decided. I'm still working on Colony? this one. That's oh you really. I'm, uh, I, I think it might be finished, but I, I have to look at it for a while and digest that's, it. That's awesome. So the kids are in bed, does a little token. Just... <laughs> <laughs> that's it's a part of the, time. Part of the digestion. <laughs> and, then, and then next to it. And then next to it is actually, um, uh, that's in progress too, but I have um, a separate series of, of, of work where I'm working from audio. So I am listening and painting. What are you listening to? So, um, so I have a whole, I have a series right now where I'm listening to, um, to a, 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 re, a field recording of a project my friend uh, Ryan Ingebrigtsen did, um, okay. who is a local composer, and he collaborates with, um, with, uh, with dancers and does does installation like sound installation work. Oh, cool. And, um, but he did a uh, a project. Um, in which he he lived at um, a couple state parks up in uh, um, Minnesota, and you guys will like this. Um, you'll get this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, and he um, did did hikes and, and kind of uh, composed pieces by way of making trails through the space and then leading people on. The, it is called Song Path. So huh. and the, and in the record, he so he did a really high quality recording of the of the path of the hike and um, you mean and the footsteps. So so I so but you can hear like just all the noises. Oh. You can you can imagine what the space looks like. Sure, because there are echoes. So you're, you're hearing there's the background like, spaces. You're mm-hmm. hearing the, the birds flying by. Of, you can I, hear like, water. Sometimes going. Right. You know, because like, you know, everybody's going yeah. up, upstairs or something. Now or, you can you yeah. imagine. Like a, like and a, he'll meet people on the trail, right. and you'll. But it, but you, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to listen sure. to. So I just like you know put my earbuds in, and so um, it's like almost 50 minutes long. So I was chopping, you know, just like listening to like eight minute segments over and over, or sure. and doing different pieces based on. That. You know what? That it sounds exactly like. Um, I, and and just reflecting pop culture for a minute, mm-hmm. I just did a binge watching of of of. Uh, Daredevil on on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Everybody's doing that. Now. And 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 the whole it's idea. All the rage. And it's all the rage. And the whole idea of the Matt Murdock character with no eyes, and so the rest of his senses are heightened. And so you sort of he could actually still see, uh-huh. but he sees using the other four uh-huh. senses: smell, touch, uh-huh. uh, uh, vibrations in the air, uh-huh. and and hearing. I I could oh, I, yeah. just sort of back translating the eye part. Uh-huh. From the other senses, right? That's kind of tricky. I, to be I, like I actually, idea. when when you were talking about that, I kind of wonder if it, it, does he listen to it after he does it? Um, I think it's just sort of like he he does it, and he I don't think he does much editing. Because you might be the first person who, because like when you're actually doing it, mm-hmm. you don't you're not aware of all of those. Well, things. And it's it's uh, well, I think he was aware of like the you know as he walked through, he was. 
but I don't think he then like listened to it over and over. Well, that, that's the thing is that, that, I don't know, maybe it's my experience. When I'm hiking, I'm not necessarily entirely in my head, but you're not necessarily as aware of everything going on mm -hmm. around. It's, it's like you are a part of it. So like, you know, the heavy breathing and you are... It. Right, right, right. Yeah, he's and not so, like, himself. And so, like, when you sit, yeah. when you sit yeah. and That's listen true. to it, That's it's true. almost like a totally new experience. Mm -hmm. It's like, was I really there? <laughs> did did I was hear that? that? Did I hear that? Well, he was. He said that he, he, you know, he had a mic where he would like turn to kind of um, highlight things that he. So he was narrating a little so, bit. So he was, or um, or, or catching was, certain sounds. Exactly. That he was, that's an amazing yeah. amount of awareness after, so. like, if, if you're hiking, mm -hmm. and like you're working your body, and you, because right. I don't know, I right. feel like that for me, like going on a long hike, that's a great way to blow off steam, because mm -hmm. you you start getting out of your head and you're, but you're kind of focused just on mm -hmm. the footsteps and the, and just kind of clearing everything out. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. So his yeah. Well, he was he would like take people on the hike and kind of prepare them to to listen and point things out to like focus your attention to to different things wow. and, and then you'd go on the. Yeah, he's and, he's doing it totally so, different. Yeah. That and it's almost I bet it. I kind of wonder if it's like work in a way because like that amount of focus. That's true. While yeah. you're yeah. Because a, a lot of times you're you're just kind of letting it wash over you he's, and enjoying the yeah, piece. Yeah. Well, he's. He led one for, we did one at, uh, he was doing some at um, North Park, uh, okay. uh, whatever it's called. North Park uh, Nature Center? Nature Center, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so we went on one of those, and I know he's going to be doing, doing one, uh, there's, um, there's a day called World Listening Day. Uh, in, in July. I love these. So. People are doing great stuff. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, um, we're just sitting on our asses. And <laughs> <laughs> but it's really, it's, but it just, it was just, uh, I've always been drawn to, to music and, uh -huh. and, uh, and hung out with musicians and just. So you're, so, so what you're doing is so you're it's taking. it's a way of like getting in their head or, you know, uh -huh. communing uh -huh. with them in a, in a different kind of. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, Yeah. They're creating in a certain way, and I, I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's an entirely new way of expressing yourself that, you know, people you know, aren't I, necessarily going to be able of, to pick up. I kind of, uh, I call it um, functional creation, if you will, where you, you specifically decide that we're not, we're not going to utilize this medium over here. Everything else being the same, we decide that we're not going to taste or we're not going to see. We're going to experience this whole thing without the use of our eyes. Go. I, but I feel like, you know. like for some people, especially if, you're, if you've got a certain project in mind, if there's almost like a level where there isn't as much intentionality just beca because somebody knows how to put together the sounds and it's just they're doing it because they have to. And they're they're or they're doing it like they're creating something in a way that just seems right. Well, that's a complete constructionist perspective, isn't it? Where you're you got all the building blocks and you're you know exactly how you're going to form this thing and you're looking for a result. But the relationship with sound is different from from other people. Like everybody is experiencing. Like me putting together music is not going to be like you putting together music. No, that's true. And and that comes because of who I am and where and and like me drawing a picture or painting something no it's not I feel like there's there's a level I, I would be so intentional as I was doing things you don't have the satori you don't have the where, where yeah, but, really your hand is just but the doing thing is, it. is that Melanie is taking that recording who's to say that the person doing the recording wasn't purposeful in their intent but she's interpreting it totally differently because she's got i know head. i know well he's he's well he's i don't i, I don't i don't know about this project but it's a, it's a difference between taking a book and turning it into a movie yes no i i but the 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 artist the, the director in this case or, or the artist in this case is interpreting the original medium and then putting onto a new one and puts in your case her 
perspective. Yes. That it's totally different. It could, it's obvious by definition. It's totally different than the intent perceived or otherwise by the original creator of the. Yes. Content. That's awesome. That's that's that's. <laughs> levels of acid trippiness. <laughs> Since now, we're talking about this so much, now, so, yeah. this is one of them. So this, this one over here, oh, hang on. with the yellow. Incoming. Oh, you ah, know? Ah. Oop. Whoa, oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This was in the Fermi Lab show? Yeah. Oh, the guys wanted to... The guys were asking about okay. the Daddy, Daddy, Can I? Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, excuse me a moment. As long as corners are okay. um, so this is this is one of the first ones that I did from Ryan's piece. So um, so just. Do you remember what you were listening to when you did this? Um, it was. Uh, it was the the last bit at the very end. He had uh, some percussionists. Um, within the landscape who started making some sounds so you could hear it reverberating over like so there was definitely a valley and so I feel like they're kind of like sound waves and so so I limited my palette I limited the, 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 um, the number of elements that I was using as far as like color so that it was really I could be really immediate with it and, um, and uh, that is really cool so. I, it again. This I mean. This looks like another one of. It looks like a, like another world. And he really, looking. He said looking at, at this made him feel. It's uh, that looking at this. Was like looking at the experience, of, of being, there. Uh, Really? Yeah. It like it really connected with him. So that was really because I just I didn't say, hey Ryan, I'm gonna collaborate. You know, I'm gonna yeah. like, let's collaborate. I just kind of you just did it. I just did it, and then I was like, I, so I've been making these drawings and paintings. <laughs> just wanna just wanna let you know, I'm listening to your stuff. And, and uh, yeah, and and, uh, and his wife. Do I need a restraining order? Are you? Like... I was I was like, so I've been listening to your husband heavy breathe in my ear for <laughs> quite a while now. <laughs> That must have went off wonderfully. <laughs> Wait, it, it was, did <laughs> did you know did you know him before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's a friend of friend of ours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and I've always just really admired what he does. And, That's gorgeous. And, it really is. And then my sister-in-law is an amazing uh, flautist. And, um, she flouts. She does. <laughs> She's world class, freaking oh, she, amazing. I mean, oh, like um, uh, Molly Barth, and. Uh, um, she uh so i but this one I, I i listened to one of her pieces sure what is um, called molitude okay so what that makes me think of is northeastern arizona yeah. with the pinnacles Black and the what Black Staffish? no that's more like central okay central okay. north okay um this is like where the Navajo Nation is right, and stuff right. like that. It's, you know, you got the big sun. You got, but see, like, I, I just, I'm just pedestrian here. That's and, that's and flute I'm, music. I was equally, <laughs> I was equally pop musically, and 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 strange that you say that because I first thought Dantooine. Okay. You know what I mean? I, uh -huh. I, the, yeah. the, the, the what street, is that? Looking, looking, looking on the other side of Moss Eisley, basically, and that's Dantooine. Moss Eisley's right there. I immediately did a Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay, that's what I thought. No, 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 I mean, and not and not because I'm surrounded by by science fiction heads. But uh -huh. My brain immediately puts that reference there. I, that's you know, beautiful. I I'm not it. sure, like how it just always seems to be landscape. Yeah. That I'm that I'm seeing, and I I mean I do think that I've. Like I dream in landscape, and I have like specific places where I go with different people in my sure. dreams. That it's that is recurring. Like different people have different landscapes. That's what. It, that's just so. that's your language, and then so this is so. your expression, yeah. and like. I hadn't really thought about that until landscape came out with that. I mean, I expected landscape to come out Here. while listening to landscape, but. I kind of did the same thing with story. But then, lands landscape is coming out with everything so I don't know. yeah but I've always had like certain spaces that recur 
in my dreams or in my okay my thinking that have different emotional kind of oh honey <laughs> okay well oh, yeah. this. no this is this is awesome this is awesome <laughs> I got it. You, Shree, <laughs> Shree's giving it this one. I got it. There's, got it. there's a collaborative uh, art project going on here. No, it's, it's a conversation. I, I don't. It, I haven't it's seen the two of them together in, in long enough that I don't know who is who. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. Uh, gray is, gray is uh, Arjun. Okay. Blue. No, I'm sorry. Blue is Arjun. <laughs> Blue is Arjun. Gray's on. You're dad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're dad, and I don't know who the hell you are. Okay, so <laughs> Melanie, yes, where do sir. we where do we find your? Do, do you are you? I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, do you have your art posting anywhere? Do you? I have like, a website. So you have your website. Do you have a gallery? Do you, are, are you there, featured anywhere? There is um, physically. Uh, well, right now, until the end of the m until like the 25th, there's actually a show that I'm part of. I have a couple pieces out at uh, Naperville, um, which I, so I'm gonna. Try. I haven't seen it actually yet. Yeah, it, so once you know that you're going to go make a visit, let us know. We'll have dinner beforehand, and then oh, or you have dinner at my I, I think house it has we'll... to be during the week because it's a government building. That's fine. I think I have oh. To... oh, oh, okay. Oh, or we do dinner afterwards. Okay. How's how's uh, how often do you get like? placed in galleries or, or featured uh, somewhere? Um, Just from the perspective of somebody who's not an artist and, um, I mean... I probably, I mean, I'd say like average, I, I'm, I show like a few times a year, like three times maybe, or where it's, yeah. That's so cool. Either, um, I love that. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, it just depends on if you're gonna like, apply for group shows or or what. But um, yeah, that seems to be kind of the average, two, two or three. Is the is the art community in Chicago like huge? It is. Yeah. Yeah, it is, and and um, and people are always getting getting stuff together in different spaces, and and so uh, um, so people ask you to join or you know it's like the the thing at Naperville is because I met someone from the show in uh, at Fermilab oh which was an amazing place to to show actually like they I mean not only was it Fermilab and you get yeah. to have like the whole like tour and uh, before the opening like I had all this these friends and family who came out because they wanted to do the tour. You know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And uh, but it's a beautiful space to to show, and then also just they are so warm and welcoming. Um, the the people there. They're and not cold, calculating scientists. They are not. There's like they with the pocket protectors. There's always, and the there's white always a science art relationship, you know. That's and and the the person who was the first director of Fermilab, um, is a sculptor and has a bunch of his sculptures already. He designed the, the building. He's like, so it's pretty cool. It is. Learned a lot from being out there. But, um, and then, uh, yeah, so it was, it was a really positive experience to be out there. Um, I have to go back. I, I actually made some connections while I was in Fermilab. Oh, was, nice. And I have to go back more for the science geek stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah. Than anything else, but that's great. The I, the boys have wanted to, after visiting uh, Mark Johnston over at oh, over at the Field yeah. Museum, they want to be docents and they want to do it tomorrow. Right. And, and <laughs> they're going. I don't care about the age restriction. Work it out with your friend. Let's make that happen. You know. And I'm going. I don't know, guys. You need to like you know drive for one thing. <laughs> you know, gotta have like you know legal permit to work. You know. I don't care about that. Let's get it done. So we, we're trying to maybe maybe they could they could haul his packs through the deep dark jungles of, of South America of South America and yeah. looking for monkeys. Yeah. Oh yeah, they can be Sherpas. Yeah. <laughs> Are they Sherpas if they're in South America? I guess not. <laughs> Whatever the equivalent, the rainforest equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, thanks for talking with us. Yeah. I mean, we did the first interview. And that's cool, but like this is like so much better because I've never had a t chance to really absorb your it's art. And being, yeah. I mean, I'm glad it's, I'm glad it's not uh, you know like oh it looked better online. 
No, no, no. So, cool. All right, I hear Romulan ship. They're going Star Trek, dude. <laughs> They're going Star Trek. Awesome. Okay, well, thanks for talking to us. We'll <laughs> Thank see you, you around. Thank you so much. Bye now. Thank you.